Absolutely. And I want to encourage people to go to the Reason Rally as well as the week after. We got Rock Beyond Belief, and it's just a, a couple hours drive away. If you can make it, please do. If, if we do not have thousands of people show up, it will be bad for the movement. We, it, it, a lot of people ask, you know, what can I do to help? And a lot of people maybe aren't, aren't wealthy or whatever, and we understand not everyone can donate, you know, $50,000 like Todd Stiefel did to help me put on that festival that we got coming up here. But if you just simply show up and just tell Fort Bragg, tell, tell the world, tell, you know, the American military that this is a population that is no longer going to stay in, in the closet. We are loudly slamming the closet door behind us, and you can help us do it, and we need that. Yes, absolutely. I've had um, death threats within the military. Without, uh, I've, I've had people tell me that uh, atheists don't exist. You know, I'm sure you guys have dealt with that sort of you know theological nonsense and uh, like these weird failed apologetics uh, tactics. And uh, but then then we we get the scary ones too. That will uh, like for, for instance, I had a chaplain who who said to me. Um, he said to me specifically, um, "Oh, you've got demons inside you." Uh, I know because I'm from I'm from the islands. He was like Haitian or something like that, and he proceeded to tell me that uh, the reason I I had trouble sleeping was uh, was because I had demons in me. It was one of the eight signs of having demons in me, and uh, that it, I, if I only came to church with him, that I could shed these demons. So I went to church. You know, I humored him, and I told him, "But you got to read this Richard Dawkins book that you left this note on." You know, and you know he didn't he didn't uphold his end of the the bargain. But what he did was when I went to that church, he said, "All right, raise your hand, raise your hand if you um you know if you're fighting with." If your if your wife you know and some people raise their hand now raise your hand if you if you lied this week and some people raise their hand now raise your hand if you have trouble sleeping and so I raised my hand and he said now if you have raised your hand come forward and kneel and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so he, he like he but he waited to say that part until we were already at the front right and you know so it's like he, he tricked me into being born again it was just a weird weird tactic that this, i was like and i said the word i said the magic words for him i mean i, I told him i've already done this like five times I, it's not it doesn't mean anything to me i'll say your magic words but it, i mean it's bizarre um going back to the funerals for um soldiers being very religious um the major impact that i have with um, an official religion for the army is Remembrance Sunday, which is a very important service in the um, British Army and all across the UK and much of the Commonwealth. It's um, conducted as an Anglican service, and um, every year they get a different vicar in, but the sermon is the same every year. They um, insist on preaching to um, all, all of us unrepentant sinners uh, to get us to come to Jesus. Um, which I think is completely counter to the point of the day. I, I can I can stand most of the religious service. It's Anglican or Episcopalian in America, and that's it's not massively an issue. Even though to quote the order of service, which I've still got, um, but first let us confess our sins to Almighty God um, that has uh, foretold the tidings of the world. Uh, it's pride, it's selfishness, it's greed, it's evil and hatred. Let us confess our sharing is what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish the peace which God wills for his children. Um, I don't think you can get much more overtly religious than that. Um, rather than in service for remembrance, it's an attempt to get us not to suffer the fate the unbelievers of, who died in prior wars have um, undergone. In, in many ways, I think um, a lot of this uh, atheists in foxholes is either a red herring or a smoke screen in that you know, it even goes back as far as Shakespeare with, you know, we few, we happy few, we band of brothers. But he who sheds his blood with, spills his blood with mine today shall be my brother be in there so well. I mean, that's the only thing that matters is that you're actually willing to, you know, you stood the line and you had the same chance of getting killed as the next guy. That's the only thing that actually matters. And, you know, and, and there is certainly, I never been in the situation but it seems that there is a very strong bonding you know the band of brothers thing is is, is real um 
and they and men asleep in England shall cheap yeah that they weren't here to <laughs> fight and die with us on St. Christmas Day. And, and, he, and he method. will strip his sleeve and bear his wounds and say, these scars I had upon St. Crispin's Day, yes. <laughs> you know, the Matheus were very well represented in, in one war movie, and I don't remember what the name of it was, but it concerned World War One, and I think it was something called Flyboys. And one of the heroes in that, although he was a peripheral character, was very openly atheist, and I liked the way they represented him. So if anybody hasn't seen Flyboys, you know, watch that movie. One of the dogfighters is an open atheist. The movie came out, I don't know, I think 10 years ago or thereabouts. But they, they represented atheism in the military very well. Let that go. But, you know, all, all of these things, you know, homosexuals in the military, atheists in the military, these all become absolutely irrelevant when there are people trying to kill you. And, and like you were saying earlier, you know, the one thing that actually matters is that when you're in that situation, that you don't put the gun down and start praying. <laughs> uh, You'll get us all killed. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 the man who puts his gun down and even risks getting us all killed will not be my brother, you know? Right, and, and I, I can say with confidence, I can say with confidence that I'm not afraid of going to battle with my my Christian, you know, or whatever religious peers. Uh, that I I highly doubt any of them would put their gun down and pray or any of that stuff. That the like like Thompson said, Doctor Thompson said, they will become atheists, you know, when the bullets are flying. Yeah, they don't want to die. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me. Um, I've got a question for the sergeant. Um, when you're in a life and death situation, um, sorry if I'm slurring or it's, it's quite early, I'm half asleep. Um, if you're in a situation where it's life and death, does being an atheist affect decisions you make? I mean, if you're under fire, um, do, you, do you value life more? Do you have to take more calculated decisions? You know, I, I'd like to think so, but I think it's hard to answer that uh, objectively. I, I don't know if there is a way to answer that realistically, but, but for me, I do feel like this is my only shot, if you will, and absolutely I get a sense of I must make it through. I must see my daughter again. I must see my wife again, and, and I think that does give me maybe an extra um, sense of urgency for, um, you know, accuracy for um, sticking to exactly my training, and m maybe that plays out, but... Um, it would be hard for me to compare whether or not that's that's better than whatever similar mental you know you know sort sort of thing is going through the minds of a of a religious peer of mine. But uh, like I said, though, I, I really do believe that I would emerge from combat just the same with a Christian next to my side as an atheist next to my side. But I, maybe it's some little minor sort of like barely measurable task. Perhaps you're onto something. I don't know. I'd like Actually, to answer. I, I would, I, I would I'd like suggest to. that when when the bullets do start flying, everyone essentially has the same frame of mind, which is scared shitless that the next bullet's going to be the one that whizzes through your head. Um, and yeah, that that's um, a, a level of intensity that um, whether you believe in God or not is almost an irrelevance like that. More primal feelings take the take the wheel. Yeah, I just wanted to say that when you don't believe in an eternal afterlife, when you believe that this life is all you've got and that's all, uh, humans tend to value that which is rare. And so human life becomes all that more precious when you can't pretend that it's not going to end. In some sense, I, I suspect that you're right. I have long believed that a lot of people, not all of them, not all of them, but a lot of the religious believers know on some level that it is a matter of pretend, that they don't really believe what they claim to believe in the same sense that I believe the things that I believe. I believe what I believe because I can show that it's actually true or that there's, there's, an, there's an actual probability leaning that way, and I sincerely suspect that a lot of religious believers know on some level that this is just made up shit to make themselves feel better and that that's all it is.
Um, well, as a whole, like I consider Australia secular, and but I mean, I I do mo- know most like there most people have religion in their lives, but I mean, they're either like for example, my dad's agnostic, and my parents, my mom and my stepdad, they're um, they're Christian, sort of leaning to agnostic, but like it's it's a ma- it's the majority is it's a Christian country, and we've got the Lebanese and the Muslims, and they've got their own beliefs, so. It's, it's fairly, I'd say it's a bit less Christian than America, but, you know, I, I could, I'd have to take a proper look at it. I was under the impression that uh, Australia was much more akin to America in both its religious and political leanings than it was to England. Well, they do have an atheist prime minister, do you not? Um, from memory, yeah. I, can't, I, I yeah, Julia Gillard. So that's, yeah, yeah no, I, but, I went to bed at 12, woke up at 5. No. Well, anyway. an atheist prime minister is a lot better than what we could muster. We got the pretend atheist uh, prime minister. Exactly, yes. He's, um, he's an atheist with a veneer of Christian paint. <laughs> Bloody hell. Are you aware? The, the British? British? Are you? Too smart for his own good. Where in Australia are you? Um, Newcastle. It's about two hours north of Sydney. Ah, okay. So you're quite a ways from Melbourne then. Yeah. Unfortunately. So you're not, not going to see you at the GAC. Uh, when, when's that? I've never actually, I'm actually unfamiliar with it. April 13th, 14th. Yeah. Somewhere if I had the money, I'd actually I'd probably go, to be honest. Would, would right. any of you be attending? or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there, oh. and I'm look, just looking forward to it. Yeah, that's one of the few that's uh, looked on as like a huge international big deal, even here in America. Like, where there's lots of people talking about flying out there if they can afford it now. You know, so yeah, that, that, that one's a big deal. Yeah, looking well, forward to it. Obviously, not as big as Rock Beyond Belief, though. That's the best. <laughs> <Everyone needs> <laughs> <laughs> Justin, who is playing? Uh, well, we've got we've got Aiden is, is for music. We've got music and speakers, right? So uh, f- we've got Aiden, which is a pretty well known like goth punk band, and we've got uh, Baba Brinkman, who does that uh, rap guide to evolution, and we've got um, a, a few singer songwriters that are atheists, well known. Like if you if you're familiar with the Juno soundtrack, uh, that that type of music. Um, Jeffrey Lewis is like a underground superstar in what's called anti folk, and he has several great songs. And we've got a few others too. And then for speakers, of course, we got Richard Dawkins. We've got uh, Nate Phelps. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Nate Phelps, son of the uh, God hates fags preacher Fred Fred Phelps. And uh, you know they are notorious for protesting on so- soldiers' funerals, and thank God for dead soldiers. You know, so there will be some protests. Um, you know. Yeah, and they've actually contacted me. They, they they said to me, if I if I really wanted to have an equal event that's equal for everyone, that I would let them go on stage too. <laughs> and you know, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, no, you know, I do have an intention of of making sure that they're safe. If they do show up. Uh, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. They, they are playing with fire, and they know it. And that they actually do get assaulted regularly. I've seen enough of the documentaries, but but they're hoping for that. That's why a lot of people will take their license plate off their cars or whatever and drive by and like chuck something out the window at them. Um, but I mean, the ones they they make their money. That's how they travel around. Is they sue people and win all the time. So don't fall for it. Don't get angry at them. They're goofy. They're retarded. Their signs are so out of date. I mean, it, it was shocking at first, but now they they become a caricature, a cartoon. And I would what's be really, happy. What's really yes. funny about them when when we went to Houston uh, for Rick Perry's prayerathon, uh, and the the Westboro Baptist Church was there protesting. I wanted to get my picture with the Westboro people, but the police wouldn't let me anywhere near them. So I don't know what's wrong with the way I look. But anyway, I I, I asked this girl who was actually a charming looking girl uh, who was standing on the street corner if she would just you know hold this camera to take this picture, and she smiled at me in a weird sort of a way and refused, and then crossed the street and joined them, picked up her picket sign, and I'm like, oh damn, she's one of the turned. <laughs> so 
So on a certain era, came during, uh, overseas in Afghanistan in uh, 07. When I went overseas, uh, I was a deist. Didn't really prescribe any specific religion. Um, but through the course of going through combat and all those things, it uh, really changed my worldview. I didn't really see it as... Uh, it didn't really fit, I was just say. Yeah, that I, I hear that a lot, Eric. Um, I, I mean, that's very common. A, a lot of people who are um, struggling with their their faith, they're, they're coming out. They're they're starting to inquire. Maybe they're away from their their safety well safety net of um, of of their family being around there. Maybe an overbearing um, community based uh, spiritual sort of environment, and they start to question for the first time with without any of those um, bumper sticker length, you know, slogan esque answers, you know. So, uh, like, your 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 situation is a little different because deist. That's not there's not a really big you know, you know deist community based sort of thing. But I think my father is a deist too, and I think if if he went through like combat, he would he would emerge atheist. As you know, just go all the way over that little line, you know, that just in case line, you know, which I I think deism is basically a a just in case. That, that's my my personal opinion though find too is that different with the Canadian military because I find that uh, the American military, I've worked with Americans a little bit, a lot of limited experience, but they seem to be very religious people, whereas with the Canadians, it's almost the exact opposite. Like earlier on when everyone was talking about in basic training, you'd uh, have to go to religious services and stuff like that, and when you didn't, you got in trouble. It's almost the exact opposite for us. Um, if you want to go to a Sunday service, you have to go in your dress uniform. Everything has to be prim proper. If you don't, you get to sit back in your room in your civilian clothes and do homework or polish your boots or something like that. So if you go to church, you have to wear your uniform. But if you speak out as an atheist, you're not allowed to wear your uniform. I just want to make well, sure I understand that's, that. That's Canada. That, that, no, that's not, that's not the American Army. Now, in, in, in the, uh, the U.S. military, they actually do allow you to go. I mean, it's similar. They do allow anybody to go wear their uniform. It doesn't have to be their dress uniform, but typically is. Um, if you go to a church or a wedding ceremony, um, but church is specifically allowed, and so it's uh, synagogue and um, any any of the other mainstream religious sorts of uh, things. But me, I can't speak to FOF Dallas like I just did in uniform. Uh, I can't do that because we're not recognized. And I've specifically, you know, what not just not in uniform. Me personally, this is this only applies to me in the whole military. They made a special rule for me. Um, I was told that I couldn't speak in uniform, and so I had uh, the the Associated Press came to my house one one day, and I had my uniform hanging up behind me on the wall, and you know I had my my shirt off, and I got my you know I got the atheist A tattoo, and uh, so I was like unbuttoning a shirt, and there was my uniform behind me, and my commanders pulled me in and and said, you know this picture. Of, of you taking off your, your shirt with your uniform behind you was on the cover of 300 newspapers, the front page. And I was like, oh, yeah, I did. What? I mean, it was, it, was, it was a pretty good picture. I, you know, I was just trying to play coy, see what he was going to say. Awesome. Like, yeah, so, so what he did was he, he, he said, well, in, until you are allowed to wear your uniform, you're not allowed to wear, you're not allowed to stand in front of it either when you're reporting. So that's why I got a blank white wall right here. There's, there's nothing there, you know? <laughs> I had to move are, are, are you allowed to actually stand uh, to talk in front of a picture with you, with your uniform behind you? I've done that because I've, I've explained that some, some of my, um, like the, there's a famous picture, not famous, but there's a picture of me that's kind of iconic of me holding up a sign that says there are no chaplains in foxholes. And right, right after I, I did that, I was wearing my class A uniform right after I did that. Um, maybe a month or two later, that incident happened with me in the newspapers. So, but this picture was already there and it was already going around. So I decided, I didn't know how far they were going to try and take it or if they were paying attention to dates and times. So I photoshopped it. And now everyone knows it as me wearing this like gray suit. And I, I, you know, photoshopped all my ribbons. I'm pretty good with Photoshop, so and then it shocks people when they see the original with my ribbons and my rank and my you know shiny brass and all this stuff. 
and uh, the colors change from gray to green, you know, and uh, and I'm, I'm holding the sign, and I like to I like to explain that to to audience that, hey, I'm not allowed to be this guy. I'm not allowed to. They're allowed to, you know, go in their churches. And in fact, the army has several like hours of training that shows me how to do this. You know, um, the, the the spiritual fitness testing and training that's that's mandatory. The training when you fail, it has hours of of um, lesson plans uh, that that show you going to churches and uh, bowing your head and and they say it's the good stuff. But all you see is that after it's a all, yeah. the, the magic almighty being can't actually hear you unless you close your eyes bow your head and get your head near the ground. 